right, we're back on some show, and we're here with Aaron Greenberg, marketing manager for Xbox Live. We have a few questions to ask you. Xbox 360 is coming out pretty soon. What's, when is that coming out? It's, it will be available at retail on November 22nd. Um, there'll be two SKUs. There'll be a 299 Xbox Core system, which will include the full 100% high definition Xbox 360 system. Comes a wired controller, every, Xbox Live built in, and all that. The Xbox 360 Premium SKU is 399. Includes everything that the Core SKU includes, but it also adds a headset, um, a remote control, a wireless controller, as well as an Ethernet cable, so you can plug right into Xbox Live. Now you said the core system doesn't come with a hard drive. Is that a problem for some of the online games and the developers splitting in the market like that? No. So in fact, a couple things we've done. One, we built in a really, really fast DVD drive. So the games will be reading really fast. Um, load times will be really short. In addition to that, um, you'll be able to save your games to a memory unit. You'll also be able to download even, a, if you want to download an Xbox Live arcade game, you can even store that on a memory unit. Um, and any of the multiplayer online gaming, you can do without a hard drive. So basically, all the online experiences that you're used to having today with Xbox Live, you can do and be part of the community, play your friends, full 32 multiplayer, no hard drive. The difference is, is that how much content do you want to download? And that's a question consumers have to ask. And maybe initially they're like, hey, for $2.99 or if it's a gift or whatever, it's a great way to start. They can later add the hard drive as an accessory when they run out of room and they want to start downloading more levels or more games. Um, it's all That difference is really about storage, but performance and the gamer experience is going to be the same with both systems. What launch titles are coming out on when it comes out or are they still deciding what's coming out then? Yeah, I know, it's a great question. So um, we've basically said there's going to be 15 to 20 titles at launch. Um, yeah, the plan is that our three games are ideally on track for launch. So PGR3 from Bizarre Creations, um, both the rare titles, Cameo, as well as Perfect Dark Zero um, are on track for launch. So we're optimistic that they will be there day one for launch. And I see that uh, Xbox 360 has all these new face plates and all this stuff. How are they going to be available? Initially, the idea is that these um, face plates will be available at retail. Um, you will be able to basically pop off your existing Xbox faceplate, pop on a new one. There'll be a bunch of ones that are available. Over time, there'll be more. There may be ways for you to make your own and stuff like that. But initially, um, there'll be there'll be ones that will be available at retail. This is the one that was exclusive at E3. This is the limited edition one that we just gave out um, to press and analysts at our event in XO5 in Amsterdam. Now, a lot of people are kind of complaining that the first generation games don't look quite next generation. They look just a tiny bit better than regular Xbox. Is there, uh, what do you have to say about like that? Sure, sure. Well, I mean, the fact is, is that what people have seen so far is not final games. So, I mean, the hardware is pretty close to being done, but developers are still fine tuning those games. So, frame rates, anti-aliasing, really the polish on those games, you're not gonna see those until really launch. But I can tell you that, you know, the, the, the system is made to really show off. It's got three CPU cores built in, each running at 3.2 gigahertz. It's got a custom ATI graphics GPU, which if you were to buy something equivalent of that power, be four to $500 sold standalone for something like a PC. So you're gonna get the most powerful console ever made and you're gonna have the most, the best games you've ever seen. So, I mean, I think people will be pleasantly surprised. Um, there's some really, really great looking games. I think, I think something like Cameo, you should see Cameo, looks fantastic. That's the game they've really had time to polish. That one probably looks much closer to the final version than some of the other games that may still be a little bit earlier. Um, I understand that the uh, Xbox 360 uses a new type of hardware, it's PowerPC based instead of Intel based. How's that going to affect uh, playback of your old Xbox games for the original? Yeah, I mean, we've definitely changed architecture. I mean, one of the things that we did was we really, you know, we partnered with IBM on our CPU infrastructure. We put in three core CPUs running at 3.2 gigahertz, I think, as I mentioned. Um, and so that architecture changed while it allows us to do some really awesome things from a graphics standpoint and a power standpoint for our games. Um, it also is an architecture change. So the Xbox, the original Xbox games will play on your Xbox 360. The specifics around that, we're going to be announcing a little bit closer to launch. Are you guys uh, getting more Japanese developers this time around? I mean, that's very important to the video game market. Yeah. And uh, X, the original Xbox didn't have a whole lot of uh, Japanese developers. Sure. No, I mean, you know, we worked really hard to get the first Xbox out. Um, I think this time around we're doing things very different in Japan. First off, this console is de designed primarily by a Japanese firm. 
we went and we tested this heavily in Japan. We talked to consumers. We really wanted this to be much more approachable. We know that's great from design, form factor, being smaller, the wireless controllers, all that kind of stuff is really important to the Japanese gamer. We know first and foremost it's games and it's role playing games. And so having somebody like Sakaguchi-san, the original creator of the Final Fantasy series, coming and making two exclusive role playing, all new role playing games on Xbox 360 is going to be great. All the major publishers like Namco, Capcom, Konami, Namco's bringing Ridge Racer 6 on Xbox 360. Capcom's bringing Resident Evil 5 on Xbox 360. Tecmo's bringing Dead or Alive 4 as a launch title exclusive to Xbox 360. So there's a, it's just night and day in regards to Japanese content. Um, and I think, I think that's going to make a big difference for Japan. And it's also great for gamers in the U.S. because you're going to get all those games here as well. With Sega, they launched the Dreamcast kind of early with the, the PlayStation 2 and Xbox and all the, the GameCube. Now that Xbox 360 is the first one out of the gate, are they worried at all that the PlayStation 3 might crush them with all types of high-tech wizardry or all that stuff? Yeah, I mean, I think the way to think about this is that, you know, today we've got over 22 million people that own an Xbox. We've got the number one premier online gaming service. We're building the console to be the most powerful gaming system for next generation. So um, we've got all the major publishers, from Square Enix to Electronic Arts to so you know if you compare it to other consoles in the past that have failed, they were, they were all missing one of those key ingredients. Either you know they weren't prior gen successful. Dreamcast had no real prior gen system. Saturn didn't bring in millions of people that owned it. There wasn't two million people playing video games online on Xbox Live. They didn't have electronic arts. They didn't have graphics that were on par with PS2. You've got arcade built in. You can plug in your iPod. You can access photos. You can connect to your, you know, you can do high definition slideshows with music. And so there's a lot of great media and experiences that you can create that's really, really provides something for everyone.